Bloody Peter Serafinowicz Show. Oh, hello. Oh, is it? Oh, it must be. Oh, news. You're watching Oh, news. Oh, news, mate. Oh, news. Last time we asked you, where does Homer Simpson work? Almost too easy, huh? <laughs> the answer is, of course, he works on the set of the TV show, The Simpsons. Emotions run high in the dramatic season finale of Cake Hospital. Two, three, five, ah! Michael, Michael, it's gone, it's gone, just leave it. I know, I know. Oh, God! George Lucas tells O News about yet another new version of Star Wars. I've been criticized for the use of CGI and special effects in my movies. I really wanted to uh, go back to basics, and that's what I thats what I think we did with this new version. It's basically uh, the scrolling text that you see at the beginning of the movies now continues right the way through. It's just the words, it's just the words. What could be more exciting than your own imagination? And John Cleese's sex video gets downloaded 20 million times. Go! Come on, stop messing around with your phone, get in! They say there's no such thing as bad publicity, and they're right. I mean, the sales of the Faulty Towers DVDs have gone through the roof. Stay with us, because in a moment, we'll take a look at the rise of plastic surgery in Tinseltown. Don't go away, we'll have a full report in three seconds. Plastic surgery is on the rise in Tinseltown, and O News has this exclusive report. Meet the man who put the hills on Beverly. A couple years ago, most popular procedure was baby crown. Now, his most popular, face wipe. A uh, smooth over face with skin, no wrinkles. Beautiful. So who in Hollywood has had a face wipe? Uh, I love it. I should have had this done years ago. An actor's face should be a blank canvas, and now mine is. Some people have called me Al Pacino face, and I don't like that. My face is made from solid 18 karat gold. It cost over $25 million. It is the best face in the world. It's also very heavy. Uh. Alan Alda urges people to face up to reality. I think it's ridiculous. It's ludicrous, preposterous. I mean, why can't people grow old gracefully? And by the way, how do these people breathe and see and speak? And eat. Don't ask me, Alan. You certainly haven't wiped the smile off my face. <laughs> I'll see you next time on O News. O News. Do you like rings? Do you like wings? Do you like bings? Do you like mings? Do you like stings? Do you like kings? Do you like tings? We like tings. Then you'll love Rings, Wings, Bings, Mings, Stings, Kings, and Tings magazine. Oh, it's me favorite. Only two shillings. What did I do? <laughs> I don't know what I did. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm uh, gonna teach you uh, all about acting. Are you ready to learn about acting? Yes. yes. You, what's your name? Uh, Brian. What? <clears throat> Brian. No, oh. you don't look like a Brian. You look like a brand of me. See, what do you look like? Stand up. Stand up. Hold your chin up like a man. You look more like, uh... Mr. McMacintosh. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Brando. <coughs> All right, Mr. McMacintosh. What made you ever think that you could become an actor? <coughs> Well, when, when I was at school, I used to do impersonations of the teachers and showing off and that sort of thing. And then one day, uh, we were taken to London to see Shakespeare, Love's Labour's Lost. And I just I looked up and I, and I thought, you know, that's what I want to do. I want to be up there with... Stop talking. Right. You've got to stop talking now. Uh, I'm just reading this 
document from the World Health Organization makes very interesting reading. And uh, yeah. in the time that it took you to relate your little uh, story or tale or whatever you want to call it, uh, reminiscence, 22 people have died. 22 people. They're dead. Well, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. In the middle of nowhere, one island. Oh my God, it's so lush. It is so lush. Two weeks, 12 contestants, but only one can survive. Who is the cannibal? You ate him. Take that back right now. Maybe it's me. You eat him up, carving him up. Friends will be made. I think they look like a bunch of twats, to be honest. And friends will be eaten. Obviously, a bit worried about being consumed, but it's just part of the fun, isn't it? Who can they trust? Everyone is suspicious of everyone else. One of us here has eaten him. I ain't no cannibal at Hopkins Hannibal. I ain't no cannibal. I need a paracetamol. You know in a Tom and Jerry cartoon, when Tom looks at Jerry and he turns into a chicken? Well, that's how I feel when he looks at me. The tears. People are getting eaten, and I've got no makeup left. The heartache. We should remember him as he was, as a budding TV presenter. The laughter. <laughs> the confusion. What is a cannibal? You don't know what a cannibal is. Is it a clown? The horror. But would you stop doing that? It's really freaking me out. I want to go home now. It's not. It's so not lush. This year, they face the toughest challenges yet. I cannot believe that we failed the breakdancing task. There's one thing they say at Southampton University, you never, ever, ever, ever quit. She quiet. But only one can win the £7,000 prize. And this time, they're hungrier than ever. Who lives? Who dies? Rest in peace. Well, pieces. Find out on this year's Cannibal Island. Coming soon to BBC Four. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to Who Would Like to Win £100? <laughs> Alf Mattox has already won a penny. Mr Mattox, are you ready for your next question? Uh, y y yes, sir. Very well. For tuppence, which city is the capital of France? Is it Berlin, Brussels, Paris or Silly Town? Remember, Alf, two of your favours remain unused. Aye. Yes. In which case, I think I will poll the audience. Well, ladies and gentlemen of the studio audience, underneath your seats, you shall find, as always, a ballot paper. Please consider your choice very carefully as you make your way over to the polling booths. And we shall now take this opportunity to engage in a spot of light conversation. Oh. Alf, should you be fortunate enough to win 100 pounds, what would you spend it on? Oh. Well, I'd, I'd buy a new pair of boots, a suit of clothes and a dictionary. Uh, Leather bound, mind, and maybe a top hat for occasions like. Well, if you were thinking of purchasing an item of headwear, might I suggest that you should consider investing in a thinking cap? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> thinking cap. That will help me get a few answers correct. Indeed. And let us now turn our attention to the blackboard, and it would seem that our studio audience have narrowed it down to two feasible possibilities. I think it's Paris, sir. 
Are you sure? Uh, I'm sure, sir. Are you quite sure? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm quite sure, sir. Are you very sure? I'm, I'm very sure, sir. Well, Mr. Maddox, I can tell you that Paris is the correct answer. And viewers at home, you may be interested to learn that Silly Town is not a real town at all. That was just our little joke. <laughs> Silly Town. The very thought of it. <laughs> Traditionally fashioned Chesterfield sofa. Made with darkest, hardest Spanish mahogany. Covered in sensual Canadian leather. Adorned with succulent circular buttons. Stuffed with moist Morello cherries and Somerset raisins. And soaked in the finest French brandy. Drizzled with double Devonshire cream. And all for just 400 pounds. Or 2,000 pounds for a pack of six. This is not just any sofa. This is the Christmas pudding sofa from Sinister, a family company. Have you got the time? Do you know what time it is? What's the time? What time is it? I need the time. Do you want to know what the time is? Yes. 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 Then call the Butterfield Timeline. Do you have the time? It's about two o'clock. Call any time, day or night. Hello? It's either quarter to three or a quarter past nine. Good evening, or good morning. So don't be late. Call the Butterfield timeline now. It's only one pound per call. But wait, I haven't set up an account with the phone company, so please send a cheque or banker's draft for one pound to this address. Don't forget, send the cheque as soon as the call is finished, or later on that day. Whenever's convenient, it's your choice. Call now. Well, Alf, your next question is for a shilling. Crikey. How are you feeling? Oh, I've got the right collie wobble, sir. <laughs> Shall we take a look at it? Yes, sir. Very well. For one shilling, at a dinner function, what must you not place upon the table? Your fingers, your elbows, a gravy boat, a candlestick. Ooh. So, Elf, have you an inkling? Well, I've not been to any dinner functions before, so this will be a bit of a stab in dark. And if it's not too much trouble, sir, I'd like to telegram an acquaintance. And to whom would you like the telegram addressed? Uh, to Henry Nicholson. Is Henry Nicholson a clever man? Cleverest man in my street, sir. To Henry Nicholson, stop. This is Sir Barnabas Montague, stop. I am accompanied by your good friend, Alf Mattox, stop. He has a question for you, stop. Right. Um, good evening, Henry, stop. What should one not put on the table at dinner, stop? Elbows or fingers, a question mark. Best wishes, Alf. Stop. Well, while we await a response to Alf's telegram, let us enjoy the soothing sounds of Perry Rogers. I'm going to kill myself if she says goodbye. I'm going to kill myself if she makes me cry. I'll slit my wrists or I'll cut my throat, but I'll kill myself, I'll kill myself, my bleeding on her doorstep. Well, Perry, thank you for that delightful tune. 
And we have now received a reply to Alf's telegram. Dear Alf, stop. Think it could be elbows. Stop. Not absolutely sure, though. Stop. Your friend, Henry Nicholson. Stop. Does that help you at all, Alf? Well, I thought it might be elbows. I think I'm going to have to consider this for quite a long time. Well, that sound tells us that, unfortunately, once again, we are under attack from Hitler's planes. We shall now all move down into the air raid shelter, and we advise you at home to do the same. God save the king, and remember, walls have ears. Good night, everybody. Good night. Get great deals at Complico. This widescreen TV, only 37.42 squared. This MP3 player, only 79.99 divided by 89.99. Times 9.9. 5.29368% off this fantastic microwave. This kettle, only 15527 minus the price of the microwave we just showed you. Complico, always awkward prices. Uh, Mr. Brando, I hope you don't mind me asking. I was just wondering how you go about learning your lines. I never learn lines. It's a waste of time. What I do is I have somebody write my lines on big cue cards. Some people call them idiot boards, although I am not an idiot. <laughs> and the guy holds them off camera so I can read them, like I have over there. This is my nephew. I don't know why I keep him in employment his handwriting is so bad. I can't. I can't read what it says. Hold it higher. What's the matter with you, Daffy Goon? I'll have words with you later. Ah, oh, you're a good kid. Oh, I'm bored. I'm bored. Come dance for me. Dance. Come on. Do the dance for me. No, not that one, the other one. That's it. Come on, everybody. Come on. It's a celebration. A guide to modern life. Let's pretend to have witnessed a murder. We've all thought about it, making up an entirely fictitious murder and then reporting it to the police. But if you're actually going to go through with it, you'll need to get your story straight. This is going to be fun, isn't it? Get the wife to help you, as women are very good liars. Although, let's face it, the police are never going to take a woman seriously, so you might be better off going it alone. Come on, man, off to the police station. First of all, who committed this murder? What did he look like? Was he tall, small, chubby? Did he wear a hat, smoke a pipe, two pipes? It's totally up to you. After all, it's your murder. When you're talking to the police, remember to act distressed. For example, stumble over your words, burst into tears, knock over the inspector's cup of tea, it all adds color to your story and makes you all the more believable. The next thing you have to think about is the victim. Was it someone you knew? Well, stop. It can't be. Otherwise, how come they're still alive? Granted, they may have died while you were at the police station, but you wouldn't know that, would you? No, your victim has to be imaginary too. It could be anyone. A dentist assistant, an astrologer, a pasta chef, a tuba repairman. Be creative. Now, the murder weapon. Again, the only limit is your imagination. But don't be too outlandish. The police might smell a rat if you tell them it was a 90-year-old woman who used a gold scimitar to decapitate her grandfather. As the weeks go by and the police have made no progress whatsoever with the investigation, it's important to keep up the pressure. 
Visit the police station every day, demanding an update and insisting that the murderer be caught immediately. If they still refuse to do anything, step it up a gear. Take your story to the local paper, the Nationals, the BBC. Which has led to the resignation of the British Chief of Police. Who knows where it will take you? What you're saying is that the murderer actually smoked two pipes. <laughs> You've fooled everyone. Wink. Get more great deals at Complico. This fridge freezer, only pi hundred pounds. This laptop, buy now, pay in 237,000 seconds time. Complico, always awkward prices. Welcome back, smiley face. Today we are talking to Paul, who says, my parents are getting divorced. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out! I do not have parents, but I have been programmed to understand that this is an unhappy event. It's been really hard, Michael Six. They're always arguing. I am sorry to hear that. Sad face. I just want us to be like a normal family. Please cease crying. Please cease crying. Here is a tissue for your secretions. In the middle, yes, you. I me? Mean. Yeah, I want you to come and read the scene for me. See if you benefited from any of the advice I have taught you today. Come on, come on, read the scene. Kev, can I have a chair? Oh, wait, 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 what are you doing? It says in the script I should sit on a chair. It says in the script you should sit on a chair. Yeah. Sit down. Come here. If it's said in the script to go put your head in the oven, would you do that? And bake your head into a pie, a head pie? Would you do that? Look at me! Look at me! If it's said in the script, you should steal a car and drive it off a cliff and crush that car. And your body's all mangled up in a stolen automobile. And the flames are going higher, and they can't cut you out of there. And your mama arrives at the wreckage, and looking at my beautiful girl, she's all mangled up in a car because of a stupid script. Would you do that? Look at me. No. Uh, uh, I need the bathroom. Uh, I crap myself. Uh, I can't believe that I crap myself. Oh, God. What is it? What kind of place is this? There's crap all over the place. And I apologize for that. What kind of respect is this you show me? You bring me to this place, your country. I come here and there's crap on the floor. I've never been so insulted. And I apologize for that. Clean it up. Clean it up. Do you want to have a one-to-one -one chat with one of our gorgeous zombies? Call now and speak to real zombies in your area. Call Zombie Chat now on 0909 879 6660.
this isn't just a laboratory standard. This is weapons-grade plutonium, and it's the purest kind you can get anywhere in the world, and we're very pleased to be offering it to you today on the Buy It channel. So storage, where would somebody store something like this? Well, the beauty of this is you can really store it anywhere. So uh, a bedroom, a bathroom, uh, the attic conversion, even a shed. As long as it's lead-lined, as long as you remember to line it with at least four inches of lead, you'll be absolutely fine. It's fantastic. It's very modern. It handles very well, and it's a lovely, lovely green hue as mm. well. Yeah, it's more of a it's more of a glow than a hue, but um, you know, just looking at it, actually, your your Katie's eyes here. I don't know if you can see this, but they're they're, they're sort of greenish blue. But uh, they're definitely on the uh, the green side today. It's really bringing out the green in your eyes, and they're beautiful as well. So the plutonium does come with this little containment unit here. Now, oh, hang on. You shouldn't. Oh, is this supposed to come off? It shouldn't Ooh, do hang that. On. Has it been like that the whole time? Uh, yeah, it just came off. It shouldn't do that. Paul had written a Christmas song, and he asked me if I wanted to go and play drums in the video. I said, sure, that's what I do. I just wish I'd listened to the bloody song first. Christmas night is here again and we're all drinking wine The men are all excited and the ladies looking fine It's getting very hot in here, let's loosen up our clothes You're a lady, I'm a man, now here's what I propose Let's all have a sexual Christmas night Let's all have an erotic You really gets you in the mood I got you something sexy Cause I'm feeling very rude Let's all have a sexual Christmas night Let's all have an erotic holy night Well, I didn't know where to look Now, I'm no prude, but I just thought it was inappropriate Especially at Christmas time So, I did the decent thing and had the song banned. Paul got arrested, spent two and a half years in prison, and he never wrote a sexy song ever again. On next week's program, a hideous woman will be disguised to make her seem less hideous. Goodbye. Please say goodbye. Bye. Now spell goodbye. G Goodbye. I am goodbye. Welcome. I am goodbye. Who is goodbye? Now spell psoriasis.